Today I'm in London with Dr. Mohammed Tahir Al Qadri, who's an influential Muslim cleric from Pakistan, who's just issued a fatwa against terrorism. Dr. Kadri, thank you very much for talking to us today. Now, here in the UK, we mostly know the word fatwa from the one that was issued against uh, Salman Rushdie, for example, following his book, The Satanic Verses. Could you explain what a fatwa actually is? Fatwa literally means decree and ruling. And this has a very significant place in the sources of uh, Islamic laws and Islamic rulings. Why are you doing this now? Um, why, for example, didn't you issue this fatwa after the 9-11 incident, for example? This is a good question. I normally never issue fatwa. But now I felt this was a time because the terrorism as a wave became much stronger than earlier in Pakistan and that part of the world last year when the terrorists started uh, slaughtering the people. The terrorists started even uh, killing the people, then taking their dead bodies out of their graves and they hang on the trees. And they started bombing everywhere. So it, the rave, wave became strong and they captured a particular areas, I mean, you know, the Deir and Sawat, and they took over. And then Pakistan military started and opened very strong operation against them. This was last year. And at that time I found many scholars and many preachers, even many political leaders, religious political leaders, I found them silent on this brutal act of brutality committed by the terrorists. Can we talk in a bit more detail about what you say in the fatwa? It's a long document, but nowhere in it, as far as we've seen, does it mention jihad, holy war. Why doesn't it? Why did you miss that out? I have concentrated only on the subject of terrorism, but I have mentioned in my book categorically that this act of terrorism is, is not jihad. So, in fact, terrorism can't be considered as a part of holy war? Absolutely not. Let me tell the holy war is also a wrong translation. That is wrong translation, I would declare, and I think you would be the means to communicate this message first time on, uh, to the world. And its meaning is struggle. That's it. The, the word war is never, in, is not included in the origin and in the format and in the meaning and implication of world jihad. Jihad is a very wider concept. It means just to strive for, to struggle. Good endeavors, good struggles, good putting whatever energy and abilities you have. If you put all energies and efforts to achieve your good end, that is known as jihad. So there is no place for aggression in concept of jihad. No place of brutality, no place of killing mankind. So. The holy war is not the concept, it is holy struggle. So terrorists, in your opinion, have hijacked the concept of jihad yes, to justify the they action. have hijacked. And they have misguided the people and youth. And this, they have, their struggle has, or their efforts has, no link and relationship with jihad. You use terms like terrorism and innocent people in your fatwa. These are terms that are hugely open to interpretation. What did you mean by them? I understand they again create an excuse on the basis of innocent, the word innocent. I would like to make it clear. In case of killing or non-killing, the word innocent has never been used in Quran. This exception of innocent has never been given in Quran and nor in the Sunnah of Holy Prophet, Prophet of Islam. The word in Quran is used, Man qatal, auz billahi min man qatal nafsan bighayre nafsin. This is the word used in Quran. Not innocent. The word bighayre nafsin, meaning if anybody kills a human being without the lawful right which the court exercises, if the person was an intentional murder, so he was liable to capital punishment, if he is a rebel, so as the punishment of rebellion with killing of man, he is liable to capital punishment. And if he is a terrorist, 
and he kills the person so as the punishment of the act of terrorism he is liable to death punishment so he see quran says if the case is not falls within these three things he was neither an intentional murderer he was not any terrorist or killer of man or a rebel killing the man so if anybody kills any person who does not fall within these three categories so the whole world after this that that is the innocent people any all peaceful uh, populations all men non combatants those who are not fighting with you one to one in the battlefield then everybody has a right to kill one another in the battlefield so everybody who is non combatant and was not liable to or to death of punishment through uh, punishment death through the court due course of law so all human population societies people working in embassies going in the markets living in their houses in the schools the trade centers the trains every single person civilian who is non combatant is in fact innocent the aim of your fatwa seems to go against everything that suicide bombers and fundamentalists believe about themselves yeah, yeah. um who is it aimed at and what effect do you think it will have thousands and millions and millions of youngsters those who are not potential extremists but they are available but somebody and the people who are wrong doer or who are always behind the youth they can trap them and they can put wrong ideologies in their mind that they can misguide them by using the wrong meanings of this terminology first of all this will affect them they would be clear and they would be never you can say kidnapped by the terrorist people secondly thousands of those youth and people who are have not been totally brainwashed and who has not become suicide bombers yet but they are on the same track they are going on the same road they are going forward they are not yet achieved that station but they are on the same lines they have become conservative they are living an isolated life they believe in isolation they are not getting integrated and they have some hatreds developing in their minds which have it these things which have tendency to lead them towards radicalism and then terrorism these thousands and thousands of youth will stop and i hope inshallah i say by grace of almighty god nobody in the whole muslim world would be in a position to rebut it they can disagree with me just in slogans i can't say with surety about those who are already brainwashed and they are doing but they are little in number but much larger in number thousands are waiting behind to enter that peace at least this will stop them and in future this will help the youth of the muslim ummah Uh, to be high kidnapped towards their side this will give a very very big effect on the islam and humanity and let's talk about what's increasingly becoming known as islamophobia particularly in europe kurt filders who's a dutch politician he's made a film which says that the quran is a fascist book what what would you say to him i think if these kind of these are the same kind of activities which the not usama and, Th- and taliban but their supporters and their welvichers are doing about islam against non muslims if in western world some people start doing the same kind of thing it will not help in development of the peace process it will again create hatred so question is what would be the end what they want to achieve out of that just hatred just reactions just further disputes just further clashes and further division of humanity that there's quite a lot of opposition to islam in europe at the moment the swiss for example have banned the building of more minarets um france is talking about banning the burqa um do you think that europe is ready to accept islam the best solution for peaceful atmosphere for the mankind is multiculturalism there should be full democracy freedom of religions freedom of cultures except free, no freedom for terrorism no freedom of for extremism no freedom of uh, creating brutalities and creating divisions in the society the first islamic society and state created by prophet muhammad prophet of islam in madina was a multicultural society he started this society and state from an alliance with jews and christians and their allied tribes and their local customs their cultures their traditions their religions and their customary laws were given guaranteed protection everybody will live 
according. So Quran says, Lakum Dinukum Waliya Deen. This is the this is a very full-fledged surah on freedom of religion in 30th part of Quran. And I'm quoting just the last words. The full surah is on freedom of religion. Quran says, Lakum Dinukum Waliya Deen. Holy Prophet declared, You are free in your religion and we are free in our religion.